What up, Berlin? Let's make sure this thing over in the bay. I heard Yanni's mom's watching on the live stream. What up, Miss Evacalio? Uh, let's get this shit set up. All right. Hi, I'm Ken. Uh, Ken underscore Wheeler on Twitter, where you can read a bunch of trash. Uh, I'm not allowed to say where I work, but it's dope and we're hiring, so shout your boy a holla. Um, before I get started, I just want to let it be known that I made the best album of all time, uh, and it's out on Spotify and all that stuff, so it's called Love Songs for Your Mother, and it's like 80s roller rink, Stranger Things music. It's really fun to code to, and you should download it. Just saying. It's irrelevant to the talk. Uh, but I'm here today to talk about what's new in the React world, and it turns out there's a shit ton. It's a super exciting time for React. For a while there, I was like, you know, it's good. It's like done, you know, we're, we're doing things. And then here they go and just release some crazy, crazy new things that are literally changing everything, backwards compatibly, of course. Um, but I'm going to run through a lot of that today, and we're going to see what, in fact, is new. So uh, just to get started, let's rock with 16.6. You know, this is what your, your job will let you install, unless you're at my job and you run an alpha like a G. <laughs> so uh, yeah, what came out in that? Um, three really good things, right? It's, it's no hooks, but they're, they're super dope, right? And that is uh, React Memo, React Lazy, and Context Type. I mean, other shit came out, but this is what I'm going to focus on right now. Right? So React Memo is something that, uh, that I've always wanted, and I just got blindsided by it. They said it came out, and I was like, what the fuck? It's amazing. Um, so if you've ever used, uh, you know, yeah, so it's a React conference, and you all write React, so you've probably used class and function components, I'm assuming. Um, you know, if you wanted to optimize some of them, right, you've probably used a pure component, right? Or if you're a little bit more daring, You've done sh you know, should component update, that sort of thing. Um, but using function components, uh, you know, there was no such optimization outside of you know, like some third party things. Um, but now it's built right in. Uh, if you look here, if you wrap a functional component in React Memo, it essentially pure components it. And that is the jam. I'm so excited about that because when you see later in the talk, I'm not writing anything but function components from here on out. We'll get there. Um, next up is React Lazy, which is actually really cool because this is the first thing in React prod, right, that is, that is first class suspensey. Um, so what it does is you have a function here, right, where you uh, React Lazy, and the argument is a function that returns a component here with the import. Now the import uh, directive there tells your bundler to do a code split. Um, you know, depending on which bundler you're using, that's the one that is going to you know, that's how they're going to handle it. Um, but what Lazy does is it wraps that uh, in like a suspensifier, right? So now your, your, uh, <laughs> your code split is suspensified, and I'll explain that in a second, right? So if you're going to use it in here, right, now you have a top-level import suspense, so you can do react.suspense here, um, react suspense, and then if you throw one of those components in there, it's going to wait for this to load, and it's going to show this fallback uh, in the interim, right? And I think this is the first time in regular React that we've actually been able to use this kind of suspense feature, uh, which is pretty tight because I can't wait for that shit to come out. Um, but we'll do more on that. Um, one that I'm particularly excited about is context type. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, typically, up, up with the new context up until now, you've done something like this where you have this... Uh, the functional child render prop from the, the consumer. Um, and that's cool, but have you ever looked at the React Dev Tools and something that uses that a lot? It's like, it's, yeah, it's, it's a lot. And when you're coding, it's a lot to parse, right? And what it's doing is it's adding another component. So I was, I was rocking on something at work, and it was performance sensitive, and it was like hundreds of things on the screen at a time, right? So I wanted to pass data to it. And uh, I was like, hey, why don't I use context to pass this data to it? And then I realized that by using this, I've taken hundreds of elements and I've made it double hundreds of elements, which isn't helping me performance-wise. Um, 
So what context type does is, if you create a context, a lot of the time you're going to destructure out your provider and consumer, but um, you're going to want to get that, that context object, the top level, right? So you create your context here. And then in a class component, you can say static context type, a lot like static prop types, right? And then feed it that, that top level context object, right? And now it's available at this dot context, a lot like the, the old context worked. And you don't have an additional wrapper around it, which is dope. So these are all really practical, fun features. Um, now, we can talk about the, the, the crazy business that's in alpha. So uh, 16, 7, and beyond, stuff that you can play with today, but you, know, you might install and prod. I don't know. You see how it goes. Um, first up, I want to talk about suspense. Suspense probably won't be ready for a little while, um, but you can play with it. Uh, so before, I showed the, the lazy component. And the, you know, the lazy component had the fallback, but while it's loading, it's going to show that fallback loader. Right? Um, if you don't want it to show that right away, if you want to actually use suspense, they used to call it async mode. Now it's concurrent mode, I think. I don't know. It's changing all the terminology on me. It talks stale. Probably be some other shit by the time it comes out, but I don't know. Right now it's called concurrent mode. Uh, and if you want to do it uh, for your entire app, right, render it in concurrent mode, um, you, you'd use react dom .create root, right? And you do that with an element here as the argument. And then you call root.render with your app, right? And then your entire app is in, in async mode. You got to be on uh, like the at next for this to work. But then uh, you see this rascal right here, the max duration, right? Then now you're actually using suspense. Now, uh, if, if I have a component in here, right, that has like a, a suspense signal, uh, something like a React Lazy Wrap component, and if it loads quicker than, I don't know, is that the second? Yeah, I think that's the second. I don't know. I don't do good with this metric shit. But if it's before a second, uh, it's not going to show loading spinners. Because, you know, I guess a lot of people don't like loading. I like loading spinners, but, you know, I, you know, I guess you don't show them anymore. Loading spinners are out. But if it, does, if it hits a second, then it'll show your, your spinner. Um, so that's suspense. Uh, yeah, so if you wanted to do something other than React Lazy, if you wanted to play with it, um, you can use React Cache, right, which is a separate package. Um, and it's super not ready yet, but you still can play with it as a thing called unstable create resource, right? And what that does is it, it creates this little React Cache thing Then when you call read on it, what it'll do is it'll do one of those suspense signals. It'll tell suspense to chill until it comes back. So right here, what, what it takes is it takes an argument, and that's what it's like, kind of like keying the cache off of. Um, right now, it's it's mostly suited for like uh, like asset loading and stuff like that. I wouldn't go full on data with it. But uh, you return a promise and then resolve the promise. I'm not resolving with a value. I'm just resolving. This is you know bullshit anyway. But if I were to uh, be loading an image, right? You would just like resolve it after the image is loaded. You're not, not going to return the image itself, but it's a suspense trigger. So right here, if I had a you know my suspense component with props, right? Say it takes like a, a URL for an image or something. Um, right there, you call my resource after creating it with unstable create resource, and then you call read, right? And th this is the the important part here where you're you're putting in the URL because that's what it's keying the cache off of. Um, and then if you have this wrapped like this is rendered inside of a react.suspense component. This is your suspense signal, right? That'll be like, yo, chill until this comes back. And then it'll just render properly or not suspend at all if it comes directly back from the cache. Um, you know, I've, I've done a little bit of talking about hooks and suspense. And uh, a lot of people are like, ah, I don't have the whole suspense thing worked out just yet. Um, so the one way that I think about it is um, previously, right, if you wanted to load something, Right? You're doing it downward, right? So you're going to go inside your component. You're going to have lifecycle methods that are going to listen for it to load. You're going to have like a state that's like loading, false, and then you know like the thing, everything like that. And if you took that and just wrap it around the back of it, right? That's what suspense is all about. You're taking that and you're moving it up, right? So then anything on the inside of here that goes, that's what is going to signal for it to wait. And the cool thing about that is. Um, you know, if, if you had to individually manage this loading for individual things, it's a huge pain in the ass. 
But if you have a suspense component and then you have like nine images, it waits for all nine to load. And I'll show an example of that later. But um, that's really helpful. So if you think suspense is cool and you want to play with it, let me get out of full screen for a second. Um, there's a thing that uh, Jared Palmer built called the Platform, uh, which is really dope. It is a variety. Well, it's, it's got a bunch of hooks, too. But um, these are all pre-suspensed components. Right, that, that just load and uh, have that built in. And it's a ton of fun, so if you wanted to do it. It's great. So let's talk about hooks, because this is the most exciting thing in quite some time for me. Um, can I see a show of hands who, who knows what hooks are? Or, yeah. Can I see a show of hands who's played with them? OK, you're going to play with them after today, because hooks are the shit. So. Yeah. Um, so what is a hook? A hook is uh, it's a new feature proposal, right? Available in 16.7 alpha. If you just install at next, like if you want to play with hooks, do create React app and then just do like you know yarn add React at next, React DOM at next, and you should be fine. But you know, if you want to just get cracking with it, you use code sandboxes. I don't know. We like to have fun. Um, but it's a way to write a function-based component with class component com capabilities, right? I remember. Um, a while back, I was, I was talking greasy on function components, saying you know, they, they didn't do much and they couldn't be optimized and stuff like that. And some React core team members were like, shut your mouth. No, they, not even close to that mean. They were nice about it. But uh, you know, that's why, because they knew that this was coming. Um, it's, uh, it's amazing. You know, previously, they were just functions, but now we're augmenting functions to give them class-like capabilities. Right? And the sickest part about it is they did it in a way that's completely opt-in and backwards compatible. Right? You don't have to use hooks. You could just keep using your regular class stuff. Um, I'm not writing classes anymore. I'm going to use hooks. But you, know, you don't have to. So it's, it's not pushy. They're not changing anything. And it's a, it's, it's a good API. I like it. Right? So uh, there's, there's a couple. I think there's like nine or 10 different hooks that are built in. Uh, I'm going to focus on these four, because uh, these are the ones that I've found myself using while writing things. Uh, maybe some other people today will talk about some different ones. But uh, you have use state, use effect, use ref, and use context. Right? So let's look at use state, which is probably the one that is the this, this super exciting rascal here. Um, so in a function, you're able to have state in your function now. Right? And the way that you're able to do that is with this use state. Um, let's just break down the syntax for a second. Does my highlight work? Yes, it does. OK. So this is array destructuring. Right here, this hook is returning. Uh, this is your value, and this is your setter of that value. And this first argument is the initial state. Um, so down in here, right, I could just say count. Down on my button click, right, I can do set count. And set count kind of works like set state, functional, functional set state, where you know you have your state that's returned here, gives you the current one. Uh, you do count plus one, so this is like your your counter example. Um, the cool shit about this, and hooks in general, right, is uh, you know, I, could, I could do it twice. I could do it nine times. Right? You're not, you're not uh, limited to one single state in your component. You, you can use as many of these different things as you want, state, uh, effect. Um, it's pretty dank in that respect. So uh, the state hook is actually a convenience for another hook called use reducer. So uh, if you've used Redux, um, you're probably familiar with this this style of reducer right here. So you have one called use reducer where you can pass in the first argument as a, like a Redux style reducer. And then you have your initial state as the second argument. Um, and you know this one is the setter, but it's really kind of dispatch, right? You're going to call dispatch type increment. Um, and boom, built in Redux. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, set state is just a wrapper around that. Um, skirt. Let's, let's be clear about something for a second. So, so there's, there's a couple of gotchas with hooks. Um, when, you, when, you, when you call set on that, um, I want to be clear that that doesn't merge, right? So uh, regular set state, if you, if you just like, if you have like a couple things in state and then you're like, yeah, loading false, right? It doesn't just blow that shit away. Here it does, right? So you have to kind of like manually spread it in because it's not going to do a merge of the states. I just want to save you because, you know, if you're going to play with it in code sandbox later or something, you're going to be like, what's happening right now? 
Um, all right, so let's talk about use effect, which is like the, this, the second one that I'm super excited about that uh, you use a lot, right? So this is a way to do side effects um, inside of your functional components, right? Um, and it's, it's cool, you know, like it's, it, it's technically like a, a replacement for uh, component did mount, component did update, and component will unmount. Um, but it, it's more than that, really. It's, 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 it's side effects in your component. So here, right, this is going to get called when this mounts or when it updates, right? You call use effect right here. It doesn't return anything. I mean, it might. I don't know. I haven't read the docs. <laughs> uh, you give it a function, right? And, th and, that, and that gets called. Um, so you can return. I'm not actually returning it. God, what am I doing? If, if, let's say, in a magic land where I was good at programming, I put a return here, right? The function that you return is your, your unmount, right? So if you were to subscribe to something in here, like some kind of subscription, this is where you clean up that subscription. Now, there's another fun thing about it. Uh, the second argument here is a thing, I, I think it's called dependencies? I don't know. They were screwing around with the name of it. But what it is is uh, when, if these change, this will run. If this does not change, this will not run. It's always going to run at least once. But uh, you know, if you feed it like an empty array, right, then that's just like a, a one shot. Uh, but you know, if, if you have, you know, this is this is the triggers for this to rerun itself. All right. All right. So let's uh, let's talk about use ref, which you know you're like, oh yeah, ref's cool. I'll probably be doing that. But no, you're going to be using a lot of ref. Um, so, you, you know, it's not just the ref on the component. You can use use ref to get a reference to any value. I'll show you later why, you know, you're going to need that. But, uh, you know, the typical ref use case, you're going to go ahead and do use ref here and then pass it as the ref to the input. I don't have enough screen real estate to actually do anything with this ref right now. But, you know, use your imagination. You can focus it or whatever you want to measure it. I don't know. You have fun. Um, and, uh, one that you know you may or may not use as much is use context, um, like with the class where you had con the static context type to get a uh, context. If you have a provider higher up in the tree, right, and you create a context, here you can feed that same like top level context object in to use context, and it'll just gank the latest value out of there, and you can use it. It's pretty clean. Doesn't create a new component. I'm feeling it. So let's talk about the, the rules of hooks, because there are rules. You can't do these magic things without function, with functions without some rules. Um, so it's not really that many rules, and it's kind of simple. Right? It's only call hooks at the top level. Right? You don't want to wrap them in like ifs or anything like that or any kind of conditional logic. You're calling them at the top level of a function. Uh, you also only call hooks from React functions, right? components or, or custom hooks. And custom hooks are really just functions with hooks in them. Um, let's talk about custom hooks. Let's build one, right? So if I wanted to create a custom hook, this is the, the simplest example that I could find that would fit on a slide. Um, this is a use mounted, right? So if you're going to see if it mounts um, right here, right? Uh, you can use these guys in there, right? Use state and use effect. You can use them within your hook. Otherwise, it's just a function if you're not using hooks, right? Um, and then you can return. You cannot return. It's whatever you want to do. But here, uh, when it mounts, I set mount to true. Uh, and then we have this, so it doesn't really get updated, right? This is probably wrong, actually. It's probably not going to. Yeah, no, it'll run. Because this is the cleanup when it unmounts. Um, but it'll set mount to false. And I don't know. I've never even tried it. It's just fitting on a slide. But this is what a custom hook looks like. You just have a function, and you use hooks in it. You return something. <laughs> Right? There's, there's a lot of custom hooks, and I'll show some resources in a minute, um, where you know, there's really, really, really elaborate hooks that people have been doing. Uh, and if you wanted to use it, you'd use it just like any of the other ones, right? I say let mounted use, use mounted. If it is mounted, so dude, you're good to go. Right? Um, so now that you've seen kind of how they work, the rules of them and stuff, you know, why are these dope? Um, so, uh, un so classes were uh, tricky to optimize, and this hook style uh, opens the door to future optimizations. Uh, those, those wild React kids are going to come up with some crazy business, and this kind of unlocks th that. Um, and uh, shockingly, right? And I mean, you know, you have you have less code, right? You're removing a lot of boilerplate around like uh, you know class lifecycle methods and like that. But uh, also, 
uh, it compiles down to less code, uh, drastically, drastically less code, and I'll show that in a minute. Um, and in my opinion, it is far more readable. At first, not really. At first, like you're kind of like got to like follow it around a little bit, and then you know once you get it, like you're like, oh, okay, this is the organization of your values and where they update and everything like that is. It's, it's, it's better. And I'll, I'll show you uh, one thing from Twitter here. That's a class component. And then this, this kind of shows, if you just, I'm going to let this play a couple different times. Um, but it, it shows where your stuff was with a class component. And then it shows where it is when you're using hooks. Um, and like that feeling that I was saying before, where everything kind of just feels better organized, this is a great visualization of that. Just let it play one more time. This shit is neato. Isn't that neato? Isn't that fun? I love this. OK, there's another one that I think is pretty cool that I'm just going to show. Um, yeah, I was that lazy. I just screenshotted the entire tweet rather than grabbing either of these. Right. Yeah, so James actually checked out uh, Jamie. I checked out um, you know, what, they, what they compiled to, right? Because with the class, like, there's a lot of like, shim code there. Uh, and there's a lot of other stuff. Like, this is literally the difference between the same exact component uh, you know, compiled down, transpiled, whatever we're calling it these days. Um, this is class, this is hooks, right? So it's a no-brainer. Hooks are super, super dope, and you should use them. You don't have to use them, but you can. All right, so who wants to do a demo? No? Yeah, okay, I won't do the demo. I'll just fucking leave. Okay, we'll do the demo. Um, so I wanted to show uh, what this stuff actually looks like, not like a, you know, just like a counter demo. I wanted to actually build something with some of these features. So I did what anyone would do, and I built a drum machine. <laughs> so I'll show it to you. It's called the Trap Lord 9000. It's pretty dope. Um, uh, if you haven't worked with a step sequencer before, uh, each one of these little boxes, the row is a different sound, right? And then it's 16 of them, right? So there's, there's into four. So you can think of four of these as like a, as like a hup, two, three, four, right? And then there's four of them that makes up a bar, right? So uh, like it, this would be like, a, like the snare, like <laughs> Right? So that, that, that's what a step sequencer does. Um, you get the different sounds, and you put in there, and then I have some, some buttons at the bottom for just firing off one-offs. Um, but let's see, let's see how this works, right? Because I wrote this all in functions. I wrote it using suspense. Um, and uh, it's a pretty good example. So we, we do that thing. Uh, how's this size? Can anyone not read this? If you can't read it, yell. Your last chance, your last opportunity. It, was that a, it's good or you want it bigger? <laughs> bigger? Enhance. <laughs> Enhance. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so we do create root, and that is how we set the entire thing up for, for async mode. Um, so we get our root, and then we're going to render drum machine component. Let's see what's in the drum machine component. So uh, I use styled components. Should be using a motion. Who said that? Uh, and then I, I use a library called tone, right? And tone is how you, uh, it's, it's like a web audio uh, thing. Um, I could just use regular web audio, but that would be too verbose. To, to I, you know, I tried to make it a readable example, so I'm using tone. Um, skip past my styled stuff, um, and we're going to look at. So there's two pieces here. There's a configuration, right, where I have uh, all the different tracks and the samples for those tracks, right. And this this largely isn't going to change. Um, and then I have the step state, right. So it's an array for each one of these with indexes representing whether that's on or off. It can be zero or one, or it can be two. Let me let me explain that for a second. So when you're using a step sequencer, you only have so much resolution here. Um, so you know you can have your hi hats like, and uh, you know it, it's you really need more functionality if you want to go faster, right? If you're doing like trap music, like you're gonna be like. Right, because that's just how we're doing things. So I, I put in functionality where if you uh, here, so we're at 65, so that should probably be double timed, right? 
Uh, oh, not you. I was going for the other hi-hat. If you shift click, it'll make it a triplet. Let's go. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about, that shit? Hold up. <laughs> Ooh. All right, we'll go back to that in a minute. But that, that's what the two is all about. So you get really dank with it, right? So um, here I have a couple hooks, right? So I use state with the initial step state, and I have my value and my steps. Um, and then I have another state called buffers, right? Buffers are, uh, you know, like when you load audio files into the browser. Uh, when I load them, I, I, I need somewhere to keep them. So I'm keeping them in state. Um, and then I keep track of the current step, so I know it's playing. Right? And then I have two, two very curious hooks right here that I'd like to run through for a second. So uh, there's a hook pattern that I didn't show, but I wanted to wait for here to show, and that is that you can actually return components themselves from hooks. So you can return a value here, and then a component that controls that value. So for my start button and my, my BPM counter here, these are both hooks that return a component and a value. Um, I'm just going to hop down and show you. See, we have the BPM selector and the start button right there. So let's, uh, let's really quickly just go take a look at those rascals. So here's a custom hook. Use start. Oh, no, that's, that's actually use BPM. It's because I copied uh, use start and never renamed it. <laughs> Export default, holla. So uh, yeah, so here it's, uh, you, you have a BPM, it beats per minute. It's the speed that you want it to play at. And then I have set, right? So I have an internal state to this hook, right? Um, and then I have a function where I set the BPM based off of the target value of uh, BPM, right? Uh, type number, right? BPM is the styled component. It's just an input. Input type number, value equals BPM on change, set BPM, right? Um, but what I'm returning here, if you look, is I'm returning an array. I return the, the value of the state, and I return this component that's set up to set that, right? So this is a, this is a hooks pattern where you return a value and the component. Uh, let's look at use start for a second. So this, this actually starts it. Uh, I have an on state thing, whether it's on or off. Here we have on that we're returning here. This is just a button, the start button on click, toggle play, right? So it's going to, you know, if it's on, it's going to be, if it's on, it turns into stop. If it's not, it's play. You toggle between the two, set not on, right? Um, yeah, so, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not that much code. It's, it's pretty simple to, to do these, these custom hooks. You know, if you're doing stuff like measuring DOM elements or, you know, working with events or something like that, it's a, it's a little bit different. But, um, you know, for my purposes here, they're pretty simple hooks, but it's a great pattern um, where I can just use this now. So let's look at use effect for a second because you're going to see some, some cool stuff here. Um, so tone.transport, right, the transport in tone is your timing, right? So your transport is going to be the, the timeline by which things play. So you can call, like, transport BPM or start the transport. Um, so this is a thing called schedule repeat. Right, so if my transport's playing, um, I, I, I schedule a repeat, right, which is going to be like a, you know, every step. And every single step, I'm going to go and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to loop through my buffers. Right, I'm going to get, you know, based upon this index, I'm, I'm going to get the buffer and then I'm going to get the step that corresponds to the step we're currently on. If it's one, right, I start playing that buffer right, at the schedule repeat time. If it's two, I just kind of play it triplet style, right? And then I update my current step to the next one, right? And we're doing this at, at uh, 16th note uh, resolution. You know, if you want to do 32, you could do that. Um, I have a dependency, which is the config. If the config were to change, then I would want to update this. Um, the config does not change. But if it did, that's when, you know, this would probably need to get take them into play. So I have more effects, right? You can have more effects. You can have as many hooks as you want. So in here I have an effect, right, with the BPM, right? So if this BPM changes, I call tone.transport.bpm.value equals BPM. 
It's as simple as that. Uh, use effect for start, right? If start changes, right? The start state of the start button. If start changes, tone.transport.start, else tone.transport.stop. Set current step state to zero, right? You're going to reset it back to the beginning. Um, so as you can see, it's like it's it's a it's a pretty neato programming pattern here, um, where you can use these and you use these dependencies to run things when you want them to, and everything is really organized into its own little domain. Um, so let's hop down here, right? So I have some suspense in play too. Uh, we have uh, React.suspense, and I have a, a fallback here. Hey now, um, I don't do the the, the max timeout. Um, because I'm just using the default one. I think it's like 500 milliseconds or something. Right? Yeah. Um, so then each one of these, so uh, first of all, the, the FX ones, uh, these, these buttons that you're seeing right here, uh, they load the sounds individually. And they do that via a thing called the buffer resource. I'm just going to show that real quick. So we import unstable create resource from React Cache. And this is how I'm going to wait for my audio to load. Because if you try and hit play and the audio is not loaded, you're going to have a bad time. Um, so in here, uh, I just return, a, I, I use the URL of where the sound is. Um, and then I return a promise. I cr create a player, right? And the second argument is like on load for, for the tone.player when it loads. Um, and then I just resolve with the buffer Right, this to master is just connecting that buffer to the master audio. But uh, yeah, you just resolve right there. So when you when you use this, right? If I were to come up here, right? I say let buffer equal buffer resource dot read with sound, right? The sound prop, which is my URL. And when that read gets called, if that buffer has not already been loaded, that's going to be a suspense trigger. So that's going to tell suspense like. And suspense will chill until that loads. Uh, if we go into my steps here, my step sequencer, right? We have um, tracks, right? So for each one of the tracks in the config, we're going to go map over that, and we're going to run a track right here. And uh, this this rascal right here, set buffers, buffer, bur, 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 bur. Okay, maybe not. But uh, oh yeah, we got some React memo in there around this step. We're having fun. Uh, I, I, I don't think it's relevant to go into the, the meat and potatoes of how the, the rest of this works, um, because it's just pretty much regular React code. Um, I really just wanted to focus on the suspense and the hooks. And I'm not super high on time. So uh, let's play with this thing for a minute and make some beats. OK, let's see if we can make it bump in here. Can I get, can, I, I need some, I need some sound effects, some skirt, skirt, can, can Alex come up? Are you coming? Are you going to, you going to do the skirts for me? Huh? No? Is, is Alex here? Oh, you're in a skirt. Okay. Okay. Yo, just the skirt master right here. Hit me with some, hold on. Hey, um, yeah, when I play the loop, hit me with some skirts, right? Skirt. <laughs> oh, mama. Skirt. My man. Too much fun. <laughs> but wait, we're we're in Germany, right? So I don't know if you guys get down like this. Hold on, I, I might have to. All right, let me switch this up. Oh, I'm gonna have to stop this for a second. You don't do this trap stuff in Germany. I'm gonna custom craft something to your liking. You guys get. Uh, you know, I, do I have my synth open? I do. Yeah, okay. All right, let's get really, really German for a second. I'm sorry, this is going to be super offensive to you. I'm the worst human. Right? Bump it up to 130? 
hold on. I'm gonna have the, the, the dance party. <laughs> see my code. All right. Um, so, yeah. yeah. These glasses are dangerous. Um, yeah, so uh, if you want to do some stuff with hooks and you want to see some more examples that I'm not going to fit into this, um, there's actually a really cool thing, uh, Rehooks here, which has a ton of hooks, and there's awesome React hooks where you can see a ton of cool stuff. Uh, you have hooks by example, hooks.guide, use hooks. It's, it's hook ridiculous. There's hooks for almost everything. <laughs> You're going to be hooked. <laughs> I'm so mad that when I was playing the music, I didn't ask somebody to come sing the hook. Fuck. Um, and there's some cool projects out there. Like, like this thing is called Retoggle, right? Where it has hooks that return like the same. Uh, so it's, it's a collection of, uh, of hooks that return components. You saw how I was returning components for the start button and stuff like that. Like imagine if it was like way better done. Um, you know, these are all hooks, right? These are all like use text knob, use number knob, right? So your components can now have, you know, all this this crazy business right here. Look, they have a little custom state knob. It's good. Um, but yeah, do me a favor and go play with hooks. And uh, thanks for having me. Thank you.